Hey everybody, this is Praxis and Josh and I are down on the lowest level of the house preparing everything, the last kind of last minute stuff, although it doesn't happen for 72 hours, before the floor gets poured. Uh, Josh is putting up some skirting over here so that when they were smoothing out the floor, uh, there's going to be some spatter. There's a, a, a machine that has like a big bar and it vibrates and as it vibrates to smooth things out, it kind of spatters things up. So the guys that are doing the, the pour had suggested we should put some skirting up around here to kind of protect the walls. Josh is working on that now. Yesterday, and I'm going to be doing a little bit more today, uh, we're putting foam around anything that pokes up through the slab. And the reason for that is that when concrete warms and cools, it expands, it contracts. And it, if you have it in direct contact with things like these posts uh, that are supporting the house or even the walls and things, it's going to be nudging that stuff. And over time, you know, it's not good to you know, keep having all your stuff nudged, especially plumbing and things. It could crack. Um, the, uh, the pour that we're going to be doing here is going to be a six inch pour. Uh, it is going to be 50% uh, thicker than is conventional. Usually you do like a four inch pour. I'm doing six inches for a couple of reasons. One is that while Josh did the best job a human being possibly could in compacting all this stuff and shoveling all this stuff in, I just got to give him uh, credit for that again, 23 tons of rock. Josh shoveled through that window, put in here and compacted. He did the best job a human being could to get this stuff compacted, but it's never going to be as good as completely undisturbed soil and ledge and everything. And there was a lot of stuff. 23 tons of gravel was brought in here. And, you know, despite the fact that he did a really great job compacting it, you know, I, there could be some further compaction that's going to happen. So I wanted to have the slab be extra strong, extra thick. And also on top of that, uh, the whole idea of this area in here is to create a big thermal mass. So when you run the wood stove, that heat goes out into the floor, it absorbs it slowly, it releases it slowly, and concrete is a really great thermal mass. It's really dense, it can hold a lot of heat energy. So buying that extra concrete, while it's more expensive now, I think it's gonna make the house perform better. Having that big reserve of heat and cool, it'll keep it warm and comfortable during the winter and cool and comfortable during the summer. I think it's worth it. It's like an investment in an air conditioner that you never have to, you know, run electricity for later on. I mentioned earlier that one of the reasons we're putting the foam around these things is uh, we don't want to crack anything, specifically plumbing. Uh, you don't want that stuff to crack. And I just wanted to mention that something that's really been on my mind lately is, uh, you know, question marks I have around the plumbing that's in this place. Uh, the last uh, homestead I built, my dad and I did the plumbing at that one. We were able to legally do that. We're not able to legally do it here. Uh, I have owned uh, several properties, you know, throughout my life. Uh, one of them was a, a travel trailer, uh, you know, that I lived in while I was saving up money to, to move into the first homestead. Uh, not as glamorous as the movie stars all make it out to be, especially in the winters. <laughs> They're pretty awful. Uh, but in every structure that I have ever owned, including brand new ones that I've commissioned to be built, uh, every single structure where they were put together, uh, the plumbing was done by a professional plumber. There had been multiple plumbing issues in those structures. The one structure that was done by lay people, myself and my dad, no problems over almost two decades. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, am I just complete, really, really unlucky or I don't know, like that many experiences, it seems like there might be a trend there. I don't know. but. My experience is informing me to feel kind of apprehensive at this point because we're about to bury all the plumbing that's under the floor here. And, and I mean, it's already buried at this point already, but we're about to lock it in in concrete. And I, I was trying to come up with the right emotion. I was talking to Josh this morning. I think it's just sadness. I just feel sad that I couldn't have done it myself and know that every joint is really well put together. I just hope that it's all right. I mean, the rest of the structure, we're going to be able to have access if there's a plumbing leak. But if it leaks under the slab, we're not even going to know. You know, the, the house will just feel extra humid, but we won't know what that's coming from. And even if we did, are we going to want to jackhammer through this floor to get at it and not even knowing where it is? I just feel sad. I know I usually start, end these videos on like an upbeat, but it's just sadness today. Total sadness. Although I'm really excited that we're going to get the slab poured in 72 hours. That's it. Thanks for watching. No, not going to leave it up. Sadness.